Welcome to the Recover You Podcast. I'm Kyleen. And I'm Patrick. We are a couple in recovery. From sex addiction. And betrayal trauma. Together we share our story to encourage you on your journey. It's here that we talk about sex addiction, betrayal trauma, mental, emotional, and physical health, faith, and anything and everything needed to recover you to your most authentic self that God created you to be. Welcome everyone to another episode of Recover You. Hello, Patrick. Hello, Kylie. How are you today? I'm doing great. Great. I'm really good. I'm glad you're doing great today. What are you doing today? I'm also doing great. <laughs> I guess we're both doing great. <laughs> I'm glad we're doing great because today is part three of daily tools to live a life in recovery. So quick uh, summary, if you have not listened to part one and part two, go back and check those out. We've talked about basic daily tools and activities that the betrayer or the addict can use to uh, promote sobriety and get into living a life of freedom and recovery. So part one, we talked about blockers, the faster scale and the feelings wheel. Part two, we talked about how to write the 10 year letter and the benefit of that and how and when and how you can set up and use an emergency kit to benefit you. And today we are going to talk about things like the three circles and journaling, which you are a huge fan of. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the three circles. What is that? Before I start with that, I yeah. guess I would like to remind everybody that that um, self improvement in in a lot of facets of life um, really comes from the engagement of a intentional and disciplined approach to to life. So a lot of these things that we talk about in here is when you're in addiction, you really lack intentionality. Maybe the only thing that you are intentional for is the addiction. So you're trying to create these new patterns. So, you know, that takes a lot of intentionality, a lot of discipline. And so these things that we're talking about through here, some of them are one-time things like the 10-year letter, but in a lot of cases, this, you know, checking in on the faster scale, checking in on the three circles tool where you're at, checking in on journaling that we're going to talk about as well, just create more intentionality in your life and greater intentionality helps you become more aware and helps you move forward. So I just want to keep reminding, you know, us recovering addicts of that very, very fact. So yeah, the, the intentionality and the awareness are, I think the key markers of people that are successful, right? right. Because I think when we, when we walk through life, with a lack of self-awareness, then it's almost like um, external forces control our behaviors as opposed to us intentionally moving through life with choice. And so part of recovery is figuring out why did I do this? What did it do for me? Like, how do I manage my life in a healthy way now? And and that takes a lot of this processing, which um, a lot of these tools are just resources, ways to get your brain thinking about what all of this means and the type of person you want to be so that you can essentially choose your identity, you know, as you move forward in life, because that's something we all get to do. And I think a lot of times we've talked about this before, but we think we're living in the conscious, right? We're, we're conscious thinkers. We're logical. We ruminate, you know, these are all conscious things. And we're like, man, it's just, I'm in my brain all the time, but about 95% of your life is lived in the subconscious. And so all these tools, like the faster scale and the feelings wheel and the 10 year letter and these types of things are helping sort of cross this barrier and to connect that 5% of living that you do in the conscious brain with the 95% in the subconscious so that you are ruled actually by, um, not by beliefs that sort of subconsciously happened in the past, but by conscious choices you're choosing now moving in the future. So when you become aware of what was I living into? Oh, I didn't realize I had that belief and this is why I did X, Y, Z and all these types of things. We bring it up to the surface level of our consciousness and then we can make a different decision. But we can't do that if we're not aware of it. So all of these tools are just steps in that process. Mm -hmm. Um, And and, uh, we would also say, do as many of them as you possibly can. So like every week we're talking about different tools and one may resonate really strongly, but we encourage that you do all of them because it's really repetition from a variety of different ways. You know, like when you, when they say like, you can hear something once, but it doesn't resonate. You hear it in a different way from different people, seven to 12 times. And then finally something clicks in your brain. So all of these tools, while they're different, they do a little bit of different things. They still kind of all have the same goal, which is to help you become more self-aware and more intentional. 
And and a lot of times when I'm, I'm working with guys in groups is is we will talk about let's say blockers that we talked about or writing the ten year letter and, and somebody will say yeah I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put some blockers on there I'm like great when which one and by when mm-hmm. and so I I try even in a, in an instance where it's just one particular event that mm-hmm. you're trying to do or the ten year letter great you're gonna write that when can you read it next time because that makes them you know get, get ready for it. And I would also say if anyone has anything like ADD or anything where you're aware that like procrastination or time management is like a thing for you, just get some support with that, right? So if there's someone that you're doing with this with in a group, or if you have a therapist, or if you have a friend as an accountability partner, do that where you say, hey, like my commitment this week is to do X, Y, Z. And like, if you do have certain things, like sometimes you might even say that and then it goes right out your brain, right? So like what works for you? Does it, do you have to put like an alarm in your phone? Do you have to ask somebody to call you on Wednesday to remind you and check in? Is that enough? Um, I don't want to say pressure, but is that enough of a commitment that like knowing somebody's going to call you is going to remind you? Or like maybe it's both of those things. Maybe you put a reminder in your phone, maybe you block it out in your calendar, and somebody calls you to make sure it's happened, right? So kind of through this process, again, sort of getting to know yourself is like think through the patterns of behavior because if something's really important to you, how have you been able to get that done in the past? And if getting things done is really difficult for you, then kind of think through what are some support systems and support support tools that you can maybe utilize in these cases because it's, you know you you do find this important. So how how would that work best for you? And everybody's gonna be a little bit different, right? Like Patrick can just say I'm gonna do it and he says it. <laughs> Other people may need a call on you know Tuesdays, you know, or a text or um you know or to put it in their phone or whatever. And that's okay too. Yeah. So that's our public service announcement before we go into the, to, to the next one. All right. So, so, three circles. so the three circles, the three, star, the three circles is a, a written document that you do that um, helps you define uh, behaviors you don't want to do behaviors that may cause alarm in you because you're getting closer to the behaviors you don't want to do. And then it defines those behaviors that make you feel like you're in restoration. So if you recall from the faster scale, we talked about restoration. Well, restoration has a meaning to it and has a specific meaning for most of us, right? So, and the reason they call it the three circles tool is the three circles tool is simply a green circle, which is, those are all positive behaviors. You're checking in, you're um, you're um, journaling every day. You're being open and honest. All these different things, um, and then and then so you would define that. You actually sit down with your piece of paper and you define what a green circle behavior is. So I'm just going to pause too because when I. Um when I work with women on the boundaries side, we also do something really similar. Um, and we do like green, yellow, red in terms of like what they will or will not tolerate, right? And so we, we still do include the green. And so we're looking for green flags, right? So you can think about that too, is like what are behaviors that are going to demonstrate to my spouse that I'm taking this seriously, like put those in there. So that might be a different perspective that when you personally are thinking about sobriety, maybe that doesn't come up to you, right? You're like, well, just not doing it, right? But for a spouse who is trying to reconcile with you, they're going to be looking for, you know, are you going to therapy every week? Are you going to group? Are you journaling? Are you doing these types of behaviors in the daily um, tools list that we've been giving you? Are you, you know, all these different things, right? Um, Are you listening with empathy? Are you um, accepting responsibility? You know, all of these different types of things. So, If you're getting stuck with like, well, what do I put in the green, right? Other than just like, don't relapse, maybe think from the perspective of what is going to help my partner trust me more and what is going to help me be an empathetic partner in recovery. Right. right. So what what I like to do when when we talk about this is the green generally are pretty obvious, right? So in, in a lot of cases for guys. So, you know, green behaviors are, you know, I guess you could say the if you go to the red behavior. So the red behaviors are looking at pornography, um, you know, doing all of those things that you don't want to do that are very direct and very easily definable, right? So early on recovery, I mean, it's like it's uh, you know, there's a lot of really really big ones that 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 go there. So those are the red ones. They're very clear early on in recovery. I also would say get specific with those because. Mm-hmm. Um, Sometimes you might say, like, someone might be tempted to just put, like, don't relapse. 
if that's you, I want you to define what relapse means. Mm -hmm. So, and get specific with it, right? Like, you know what your, um, the furthest behavior was, but you are the only one who truly a hundred percent knows every step of the pattern that went before that as well. So part of this type of process is actually like analyzing, like what were all of the behaviors, not just the end result, but what's like everything that went into it. Right. So that you can go, okay, well, I would end up at um, this specific website and spend money. So I just don't want to spend money because that was the end result. Well, but you got onto a website first, which meant you got onto a laptop first, which probably meant you got into a la- onto a laptop in a private area first. You- and then you probably had a thought before that. And maybe that thought happens in a specific location or with a specific emotion, right? So the idea with all of these is to help you go so much deeper than just like, you know, don't log into the computer, right. right? Or don't log into the website. I often feel like, like this is a really, really good one. So if, if, if somebody was acting out on their phone in the bathroom, um, a lot of times what will happen is the red circle behavior, like from the get go will be, you don't take your phone into the bathroom. Right. And that lasts for a long, long time. As you move into recovery, it could mean, because sometimes people forget they have it in their back pocket, they run in there real quick to go, it could be looking at your phone in the bathroom. So you see how it kind of shifts a little bit? So like the first one is, you even take that thing in there, that's a red behavior. Because you're trying to break the pattern. Right, you're trying to break the pattern. You know, three, four years on, you're traveling, you're obviously not going to leave your phone with somebody in the airport so you can go to the bathroom, right? So you, Mm -hmm. you then, your red circle at that point is, well, you don't look at it. You don't pull it out to search anything. Right, right. Right, exactly. So, so you know, red. Be- once again, if you go early on, green behaviors are very, very obvious. You know, you're being open, you're being empathetic, and those actually don't change in a lot of ways, right? Um, uh, red behaviors are going to be the ver- very kind of heart of what your addiction was. You know, if you were um, going with friends to adult clubs or whatever, like you're not going to be doing those things. Those are going to be off limits and that sort of thing, talking to women, what whatever that is. Your yellow behaviors are going to be things like, let's say that you used to go with a particular friend to, let's say, go act out with women, right? And in that process, you all would drink together. So maybe that yellow behavior is we're not going to do that for a while. Now, it's not inherently wrong to drink with your friend. It's just what it led to with a red behavior. Or even I would say for the middle or the red even kind of along what you were just saying is like the idea of like, okay, you're, who is, you're thinking through this process. Who is it that I want to become? Mm -hmm. And so do you have friends that are going to encourage that? Or maybe are there friend groups that are going to give you a hard time? Or maybe they tend to want, Hey, when I'm around these people, I tend to objectify women more, or I tend to joke in a crude way or, and again, thinking about like, what are the behaviors that are going to build trust with your spouse, like maybe those things are not going to lead you to relapse. And so they don't cross your mind. But if your spouse ends up hearing through the grapevine that you were joking about women's bodies while you were having dinner with your friend on Tuesday night, like, you know, is she going to be okay with that? Like, Mm -hmm. you you know, so thinking through, it's not only what, if you're looking for like deep, deep, deep integrity, and you're looking for um, honesty and empathy in your relationship, it's not just about managing the behavior when you're making this list. You can also think through what's going to help me build true integrity and trust. Right, right. And actually, I mean, that goes even if you're single. So like, you know, if you don't have a spouse that's been betrayed or whatever, you know, it's like, how do you want to live your life? Do you want to be part of a group of people who objectifies women? Or do you want to be part of a group of people who who raises people up and mm-hmm. raises women up? And, and, and so, you know, and I've had very few instances, but there were some early on with some of my friends where I had to say, hey, I have to butt out of that conversation. And nobody gave me a hard time. Everybody was like, okay, got it. You know what I mean? Like, like nobody, and it was just, it was just patterns, right? It was just these old patterns and, and they shifted the way they talked. And it was just as simple as that. And so, um, what comes to mind when we're talking about this is the phrase that we teach people how to treat us. mm -hmm. So with that idea, like we teach people what they're allowed to talk about with us. Right. And like what we, and through our conversations, we communicate actually, what we believe and how we think and how we feel. And so if people feel very, very comfortable around you to be inappropriate, then they're making certain assumptions about who you are and what you're okay with. Right. And maybe that is 
something you've been okay with in the past. But this is, you know, I, I know that the idea of changing patterns and changing in, in this particular instance, even potentially losing friendships or shifting friend groups can be scary. And there's so many different ways in life that this happens, right? Like sometimes it's you're making an intentional choice to set a boundary and, and you're inviting them in, right? Like in your particular instance, you're like, I, you didn't say anything to them like, oh, I can't be your friend. You were just like, hey, I can't participate in this conversation. And to my knowledge, that maybe happened one other time. Maybe they said one other thing, maybe. But after that, it was like, oh, they know like where you're at and you were honest with them. And then they respected that. So like, it doesn't always have to mean that, oh, that relationship is over. It just means that now you're communicating where you're at and Mm -hmm. in an honest way and, and being, you know, being, having integrity with that and seeing that through with integrity in every area of your life. And that's going to help your sobriety if you're consistent in every area of your life. But you know, everyone, like we all go through different things like that, right? Like when I went through my divorce, um, I was, I, I went through a phase where I lost a lot of friendships, right. But because in my mind I was, you know, doing the, this thing that, you know, I needed to do and people didn't agree with it. And that's unfortunate, but then sometimes that's what happens. And um, if you are doing what you believe in and you are doing what's right and you're doing it with integrity and people don't want to come along on that journey, that says more about them than it does you. And that's going to be an important mental space for you to be as you go through this process, because sometimes this might come up and it might feel hurtful. Yeah. So, you know, as you're, so once again, think about your three circles. It's it's always best to think about it this way. Three circles right after discovery or right after you've decided you no longer want to be an addict and you're going through those processes. It's going to be your the, the things that reside in your in your red, yellow, and green are going to be um, um, very clear. And they're going to the red is going to be very, very much related to the the addictive behaviors that you were in yeah, like relapse definition right like right yeah yeah what, what exactly it non-negotiables. is non-negotiables right, right non-negotiables so as you get a couple of years into recovery and you redefine your red circles or i'm sorry your three circles those things could change so a good example of a red circle that that could change would be you know early on we're talking about you know you look at pornography that's a red circle thing a red circle uh, activity, let's say a year and a half, two years on, could be that you just aren't as careful picking the movie that you're watching and there's something that's 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 harmful in it. Let's say you don't look on Common Sense Media before you play the movie or you don't like talk it over with your spouse. You just watch the movie. You turn away, you do whatever, but maybe you're just not as as careful as you once were. You didn't do anything that you used to do or anything like that. You just weren't. So that's a good example of a red circle behavior. Cause I know like in our situation, I won't watch a movie that has anything in, in it with you gone. Now, if there is something in it, you and I will talk about it and we kind of have a quote unquote plan, right? So we, you know, so that that's a good example of a red circle. The things in, in, in and we watched a movie recently that really didn't have anything bad in it, but it was something that, we just decided, or I, you know, I decided and you helped or whatever that it's just not something for me to kind of see. So, you know, I look away. Because <laughs> yeah, you know, well, um, I'll look, so- by the way, if we, we, I'm sure we've mentioned it in other episodes, but it's always good to mention again, commonsensemedia.com. We basically look up every movie or TV show we watch um, on that. And it gives you sort of uh in fair in fair amount of detail if there's you know what type of language what type of violence if there's sex or any sort of inappropriate um and that way you know exactly what version it is so you can kind of make a decision but it is funny because sometimes i'll go in and I'll be like oh i don't know and i'll he'll be like well what does it say and i'll kind of read the description he's like i don't want to watch that <laughs> yeah yeah well i just i you know there's it's good de- it's actually yeah, really good because yeah. that you know it's- we've dealt with so many like triggers and then it leads to tough conversations and so a lot of times i'm like you know we we i don't want to go through life intentionally triggering you know what i mean that just doesn't make sense so that's a good example of something that's not inherently pornography or anything like that Mm -hmm. it could just be a beach scene yeah you know what i mean and there's nothing wrong with a beach scene quote unquote unless you're kind of working through something as a couple or if you know or if maybe that was a a, a, an opening for you or something like that so that's a good example where it doesn't always have to be you know going to an adult place yeah. or or a pornography or something like that these are newer safer behaviors that if you find yourself in you go whoa what's happened here yeah and i think your point with that too is that as you 
live a life you move it you move from sobriety into actual recovery Mm -hmm. and to continue living in recovery you continue to deepen integrity and to continue deepening integrity you continue to be um with living with a lot of self-reflection and with a lot of proactive thinking right Mm -hmm. and so then what you're doing then is you're using this as a lifelong tool to say who do i want to be and where are the places in my life that maybe i struggle and eventually when you're living in recovery it's not going to be any of those old behaviors anymore those are not even things that you're even tempted to do right but maybe what you're noticing is that now the hardest thing is that you have a short temper sometimes. And that's the biggest thing that you're struggling with. And I can imagine maybe somebody that's like two months into recovery is like, I'd love to be in that place. So that's oh, it, right. Yeah. So, and so that's what we're talking about is like, you can get to the point where you still use this tool, but it's just more, what What are the things that I need to work on that I need to improve? And like, those are the. I often think of like a, a good red circle behavior for, for us would be is, you know, we've decided that it was kind of my decision and just helps with everything. So I never turn the TV on in a hotel room. So let's say I'm traveling somewhere. It's a national championship football game, which I really, really like to see. And I really, really want to watch it. And I go down to the front desk and I'm like, you guys don't have any adult movies on there. And they go, no, we don't have any adult movies. I go, great. I go up to my room. I turn it on. I watch the game. Right. You and I don't have a conversation. There's nothing going on. That's a good example of a red circle behavior. I didn't actually act out, but I did something that kind of was like, whoa, what's happening here? Why didn't we have a conversation? What's happening? You know, and all of these different things. And so I think that's, that's a good example of a behavior because it's, it's somewhat, you know, unempathetic. It's, it's, uh, it lacks, um, uh, recognition of of what the fears are and all of those things, you know what I mean. So I, I think I think that to me is probably a good example of a two year on red circle behavior that you do. Once again, not anything to do with sex, right. just a lack of integrity and maybe a lack of empathy and 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 just yeah. understanding of 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 you as a betrayed spouse. Yeah, in the beginning, you're more in survival mode. So it's like, let me avoid the things that will kill me or destroy my relationship, Mm -hmm. right? Or like destroy my sobriety. And then as you get into recovery, it's more like relationship building, right? Right. So will it destroy trust? Is it... um, is it trust building or is it the opposite of that? Is it, is it leading with compassion, empathy, you know, and that's an example of like something that you have, we ha- you have a verbal or written agreement about, and then you just going, well, I'm not, I'm not um, relapsing. So it must be okay now. And it's like, no, that's still anything that's a verbal or written agreement yeah. needs to be something that is, if you're going to change it verbally or written agreed to right. change. Right. And so that, yeah, I mean, and how easy is that to send a, phone call or a text that says, Hey, like, this is what's going on. I've double checked everything. Like, I'll let you know when it's, um, when the TV is on and I'll let you know when I turn it off. Um, are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. And, you know, going with whatever your spouse says she's comfortable with. Cause again, like in some situations that could be like a huge trust destroyer. Um, you know, and so she may say no, and then you have to be like, okay. Yeah. You know. So, you know, what's interesting is, is yellow is caution, right? Yellow is, is, in, so let's just use that example, right? You know, red would be turn on the TV. You and I don't talk about it. You know, we watch the game. Yellow might be something like, I really, really want to turn on the TV. I really, really want to turn on the TV. I want to push up against this agreed upon boundary. So the yellow is, I haven't done anything wrong yet, right? I haven't done anything wrong yet, but something's going on in my mind. Something's going on that's either preventing me from picking up the phone and calling you and say, hey, can we talk about this? I'd really, really like to watch this game. Maybe I'm activated. Maybe last time we talked about the faster scale. Maybe I'm somewhere in anxiety or something. Maybe I'm in speeding up. You know, I've worked so hard. I'm traveling for business. I owe it to myself to be able to watch this game. I deserve it, right? So it's those kinds of behaviors. So it's a Yellow is meant to be a caution. It's meant to say, hey, what's going on? Let's pause. Let's check in. So that's the type of, of behavior that could end up in your, ye- yeah. in your yellow. And then green, of course, is once again, you're redefining sobriety. You're really redefining sobriety and recovery and what that means. Early on, it meant something early on in your recovery journey. Um, but later on, it means even even different things. Yeah. So, like yeah. in the beginning, it's going to be I set I I set a blocker on my phone. Um, I'm connecting. I'm not relapsing. Um, you know all this kind of stuff, right? I'm I'm connecting with other humans. Um, it, you know about what I'm feeling. I'm learning about my emotions, like all that kind of stuff. That's the green. Five years later, it's going to be like I 
have really clear, empathetic conversations with my partner. Um, I am still engaging in positive behaviors that help me to be proactive. I have... I'm reading a new book that has nothing to do with sobriety, but it's a personal growth book. Now it's helping me to, you know, like it's, I'm building my creativity. I'm trying new things, right? Like that's what that looks like as time progresses. And and that's what we mean when we say, when we talk about people that use the recovery tools for life, it's not because they're struggling with the addictive pattern anymore. It's because they know that that's in their history and they want to be proactive forever. And honestly, if you reword that, all that means is you've turned into a person that is someone that's committed to personal growth forever. That's right. And so, I mean, that's kind of who we all want to be, right? Like we want to build our integrity. We want to build our, um, our personal growth. We want to build, you know, and shift our mindsets and learn forever. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so that's what that turns into. Sobriety is what got you to use these things um, to change your life. But ultimately, when you get into recovery, you keep using them to keep becoming a better person over time. I think about this. So like, you know, the, the, I've been running these groups for two years now. And, and so the green behavior for me is showing up engaged, working with people, um, making the calls, reaching out to folks, providing good content, listening, you know what I mean? During the, I mean, I've watched these videos a ton of times. It'd be very easy for me to check out, you know, and stuff like that. Um, yellow behavior could be like, I'm just going through the motions, you know, and red behavior is, is, Hey, I'm going to stop doing groups. And so like, you know, there, there's, that's a good example of somebody and, not even anywhere close to relapsing, just maybe I'm, you know, but in in that particular case, you got to have a more open and honest conversation. Am I getting burnt out? What do I need to do? You know, that's where honesty comes in because it is okay to take breaks from running groups. It is okay, yeah. but you got to do it in a reasoned way. You can't not just stop showing up for people. Well, you know, we haven't talked about this a whole lot in, in any other episodes, I don't think, but in the 12 steps, there's always a step for, um, paying it back. Right. Right. And so we don't talk about that a whole lot, but I do think that's an important thing to consider is as you get your feet on the ground again, and you begin to build this life, you know, how can you pay it back? Right. You know, and if you're absolutely the most busy human being in the entire world, do you donate financially to groups that like pure desire that, um, that do run these groups? Um, but if, if you're, if you have, time capacity and time space in your life, I would highly recommend that you do that at least once. Run a group at least once. Yeah. At least once. And if you can't do a group or it's you're scared to do a group or something like that, start mentoring one person. Mm -hmm. One person. Because if you've been successful, the kindest thing that you can do is to help somebody else. And it doesn't, ha- and we say this all the time, it doesn't have to be like you run a TikTok channel. It doesn't right. have to be like this huge public thing. There's ways to do it in a, in a more quiet, in a, in a more private way, but still connecting with people one-on-one and sharing your story. And, and just think about where you would be if you're in recovery right now, if no one was willing to share their story and no one ran these groups and no one ran these nonprofits and no one was able to talk about it publicly, you know what I mean? Like, where would you be right now if you didn't have the tools that helped you get into recovery? And so I would challenge you to try it. And I would say too, that, that, and I've often said this to guys is because we've, I've I've been fortunate enough to spin off some more leaders into different groups it really helps your recovery too. I, I think I think I might not be where I am today without having led some of these groups and having you know tried to keep content fresh and challenging folks and checking in with guys. You've had to think about it in yeah, different ways. Right, right. You've had to think about how do I how do I take this and explain it to different people who are experiencing different things. Right. You've really had to dig in. I mean, you've always had, I think, an ability to empathize, but I think going through learning how to lead groups, mm-hmm. um, you have had to really dig into that because it's like your job when you're leading a group is like, how do I listen to these stories and respond with empathy? And I think you've always had a gift with that, but this is challenged it, right? In terms right, of like, right. you know, you have a good day, you have a bad day, you have to show up with empathy, right? Yeah. Um, and and so I think it it is a way where if you feel solid in your recovery, let's say you're six months in, right? We've we mentioned that recovery is really two to five years minimum for the addict. Mm-hmm. And so if you're only six months in and maybe you're getting a little like eh, groups, groups, a little boring or whatever. Okay. 
graduate yourself to the next group, there's always another Mm -hmm. version or a stair step, or at least there is with things like Soul Refiner and Pure Desire. And we we highly recommend those. And they have stair steps where you start at one level and you move up to another one so that you're right. learning the same basic stuff, but they're teaching it in different ways and they're building on the foundation of recovery and they're constantly challenging you. But in addition to that, bump yourself up to the no another group and then turn around and lead the basic group right. and help them grow this. But more than that, I think I think there's something important about pouring into other people um, and passing it on. This is what I've learned and how can I help you? Right. But then, so there's something very, very fulfilling in that because it's taking your thought process outside of yourself, which addiction is like so much in your head, right? And in, inside your own body. And so then when you're teaching and you're educating and you're supporting, then it's it's outwardly focused. And there's something very, very healing about that. And then just if you are at a place where you're like, okay, I'm like, I'm not even close to my two years or my three years or my four years or my five years or whatever. It's a way to really kind of lock in your recovery because you're, it's top of mind all the time. Like you said, you're going to have to keep it fresh. You're having these conversations. And then and another thing that will come up too is you're going to hear the beginning stories over and over and over again. And it's going to remind you it, that you don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go back to day one. Right. And so there's a lot of benefits, I think, to it. And, you know, we talk about pure, pure desire all the time. Um, it's because they're awesome. And they, one of the things that they are really good at is they have a lot of support resources for the leaders. They want you to succeed. They want you to feel supported. They want to teach you how to lead groups. So if you're in a town where there is no conquer group, you could be the first person that starts one. Like, you know, that's okay. That's okay. So, um, maybe you're just starting out and you want to start the group and that's the only option you have in the area that you have. That's okay too. So um, we just want to encourage you to do that. Cause I, I know it can be scary, but I think not only is it beneficial to you, but that's literally how you change the world mm -hmm. is, is one, one group at a time, one person at a time, one mentorship at a time. Okay. I actually think, we may, we, do you want to do journaling right now or do you want to wrap that into our next episode? We can wrap it we into may. the next one. Yeah. <laughs> so we hinted at journaling earlier, but I think um, there's probably going to be enough to talk about um, with three circles for this episode. So we will connect with you next week and we're going to talk about journaling and uh, we'll see if, we're, <laughs> if this is going to turn into a four part or a five part episode, but uh, next week we'll be journaling. So we'll see you then. Woohoo! If you're listening to this, it means you've made it through an entire episode. Part of recovery is spending time engaging in healing and self-growth activities. We are thankful that you chose our podcast to be one of those activities today. Make sure you reward yourself for that accomplishment. If you've enjoyed this episode or this podcast, we would love to hear from you. Please take just a few moments to leave a rating and review, letting us know your experience with Recover You. We not only love hearing how these episodes are helpful, but ratings and reviews help others just like you who are searching for recovery information and support find the podcast too. We can't wait to hear from you. See you next week.